I have a suspicion about it. I think it's more, I mean, I've talked about this at length. Uh, I think that it, what we really should be looking at are um, the tech companies because mm-hmm. they're, right. they're meeting, mediating so much of this discourse. And uh, they, I think, really, if we're talking about an authoritarian threat, they are the ones posing the real authoritarian threat, not the Trump White House. I gave us a talk the other day about uh, about two days ago at uh, the Peter Thiel Foundation. He has a foundation here in L.A. and he has, they have a guest every month come up to the offices for an audience of about three, four hundred, mostly millennials. Uh, Werner Herzog was last month. They're usually cultural people, and it's not aligned with any kind of political thing at all. It's just people that Peter likes and wants to talk about. So my book and I we were featured on Tuesday. And a lot of the millennials who were there who either work for the company or get this invite if they want to come to the talk, 2 o'clock on Tuesday, I met a couple of them, and they were all... I said, well, how did you get her to be working for Peter Thiel? And they said, well, a couple of them said, well... And they're young. said, well, when I got out of college, I went to Silicon Valley and was working for Google. And I realized very quickly, and I heard this from a a number of people, uh, guys, white tech dudes or whatever who kind of are uh i would say i would say skew progressive to a degree they said you learn very very quickly that you could not say anything that did not toe the party line and that if you ever had any questioning if you ever uh admitted anything that aligned with the other side you were automatically targeted and that it was so obvious so swift so alarming that they left. They just mm-hmm. kind of left, and that that is that, that's just a small example. But that is that seemed to me to be the narrative that a lot of people have about working within those companies. And of course, we do see it every now and then. It kind of seeps out mostly on Fox. It doesn't really carry that much weight with the guy who who's the guy who was fired from uh, Google and kind of the strange looking guy. Who, oh, Demore, James Demore, yes, the one. That, yeah. Yes, the right couldn't really use him to their full advantage because he was a little. Um, a little autistic, I guess, to a degree, but that that's just something that I agree with you on, that that is the threat. Well, and you see this, I mean, I, I'm just basically doing my greatest hits now, but you see this with like Me Too, for example, where Me Too feminists are so hell-bent on constantly theorizing um, the dynamics of power and consent as they apply to individual men and the institutions that protect and harbor them. But they say nothing about consent when it comes to handing over your private information and data to these massive, opaque, profit-seeking tech oligopolies. Um, there was a, a recent outrage over um, Face App, which I, I thought was Chinese owned, but I guess is Russian owned. Right. Um, you know, and it's this app where you can upload a selfie and it'll tell you what you look like as the opposite gender or at an older age, yada, yada. And, you know, in um, to do that, they get access to your entire kind of photo stream. And people were surprised that they might be capturing those photos for kind of impure data harvesting motives. And that to me is not surprising at all. I mean, the thing is that we talk so much about the rise of state authoritarianism. And certainly you have that like in Hungary with this guy, Viktor Orban, or in uh, Brazil with Bolsonaro, probably less so with Trump. But what happens on the flip side if we hand over the economy effectively to all these tech giants? We have basically a decentralized authoritarianism that's comprised of like the big five tech companies. I mean, this is a little bit boring and esoteric, which is why it gets less right. traction. It's, you know, less sexy and exciting um, than it is to talk about like the misogyny of like Rape once culture. upon a time in Hollywood or something, or like Ivanka's line getting pulled from Nordstrom. But that, as I see it, is like the real threat. 